for this privilege, the privilege of knowing him, the privilege of being called his child. And I was so blessed by the song that we just sang. What shall I render to Jehovah? Has he done anything for you this morning?
out of bondage. Glory be to God. God went to great lengths to bring us salvation, watching over his word to perform it. And he brought the Savior on the scene. And we see that Jesus at the Last Supper, even though he was under a great deal of pressure, uh, he made sure that the place where the supper would be held would be properly prepared. Oh, sometimes we're under pressure, but we need to ask the Lord to help us still to do the things that he wants us to do. Though he was under pressure, and he knew that he would face Judas, oh, glory be to God, who would betray him, yet he fulfilled all prophecy. He was careful to fulfill prophecy. He prepared a special place, and he, as they sat at supper, you know, Jesus said, you know, one of you is going to betray me. And the disciples looked around and said, Lord, is it me? Lord, is it me? He said, no, it's the same one who's dipping his hand with me in the dish. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Glory be to God. Glory to his holy name. Yes, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Yes, my friends, Jesus died for us. Jesus set the scene. He didn't respond to the pressure, but he held that last supper with his disciples. Glory be to God. And he said to them, you know, this is my body that is broken for you. Eat, eat all of this. He, he, he fed them with the bread, and he fed them with the wine. Jesus did all of that, showing that he was establishing a new covenant in his blood. Yes, my friends, this morning, Jesus paid the price for us. Jesus did it all for us today. And we want to express our appreciation. We want to express to him our praise for what he has done. Glory be to God. Jesus took our place. Jesus did for us what we could not do for ourselves. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus, today. Right there, he knew that Judas was about to betray him. 
Jesus stayed focused. And he still went through the steps that he needed to go through. He told them to take of his body and eat of it. Take of his blood and drink of it so that we could have part with him. Jesus went through the steps despite what he was facing, despite the pressure that he was under. And sometimes we are under pressure, but we need to let the Holy Spirit help us and keep us so that we can fulfill the things that God wants us to fulfill. So that we can do the things that God wants us to do. It must have been agony to know that he spent three long years with Judas and Judas could now come and betray him in such a terrible way for 30 pieces of silver. And sometimes we face betrayal in our own lives. The people that we have are the same ones who turn around and undermine us. The people that we have encouraged sometimes are the same ones who turn around and they turn their back on us. But we need to keep our eyes on Jesus. We need to look forward to his wonderful face that the things of earth may grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Betrayal. 
know, eat my body, drink my blood. I want you to be part of who I am, part of me. You know, a lot of people, they, they want your help, but really they just want to use you. They want to use you and then lose you. But Jesus said, I want you to share in my glory. And it may be sharing in the suffering, but he wants us to be part of him, and that is why we observe the Lord's Supper. Glory be to God. And we can glory to God, glory in God today, because yes, he took our place. He took our place. And so as we come to eat the Lord's Supper, as we come to drink the wine, Let's reflect on what he did for us. Let's reflect on who he is and what he went through. Let's reflect on the fact that he has won the victory and that we come not from a place of defeat, but we come from a place of strength. When we come around the table and it's not to think about, you know, all the troubles that we had during the past week, but it's to give glory to God because those troubles are nothing compared to what God has done for us. As we sang a moment ago, what the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. Can you tell it all? You don't even know some of the good things God did for you. You don't know some of the things he protected you from. But we want to give God praise this morning. We want to give him thanks and honor as we gather around the table, so to speak, as we take the elements, we're not our physically gathering around the table. Jesus said, I'm establishing a new covenant, a new covenant in my blood. Oh, glory be to God. And so this morning, we want to continue just to put our faith, our hope, and our trust in Him who died for us, who took our place. Because the truth is that our death would not really make things any better. You know, we could have died. Jesus could have said, well, let them die, but nothing would have improved if all of, if all of us had died. But Jesus shot the devil, uh, the prince of this world. He shot him when he hung on the cross and shed his blood. The enemy was confused and confounded. When Jesus drew his last breath, he thought, well, uh, it's, it's, it's all over now, Jesus, what are you going to do now? And then Jesus descended into the lower parts of the earth, and he went and he preached to the captives, to Abraham, and to Isaac, and to Jacob. And he said, listen, your hope was not in vain. Hallelujah. And yes, we celebrate his death, we commemorate his death, because if he had not died, you know, we would still be in our sins. If he had not died, our sins would not be forgiven. But something happened on the third day. Something unusual. Something different. Something significant happened. Three days later, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And he's alive forevermore. I'm the only one excited about that. Sure. 
permission to die well. But we know that this life isn't all there is. So we got to die. Thank you. 